Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the CounterPoint podcast. My name is Maurice, and I'll be your host for this week. Um, a few months ago, we did a podcast with my colleague Abilash on the global streaming music business. And this week, we've actually invited him back to talk a little bit more about how the pandemic is affecting the industry and how we're actually seeing different types of subscribers uh, use these types of platforms and also what types of content they're now consuming, such as this podcast, actually. Hey, Abilash, how's it going? Hey, Maurice, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good as well. So just to follow up on what we did a couple months ago, I think it was in April. Um, it seems such, such a long time ago already. But um, just just to you know refresh uh, the people that are listening. So I think what we, what we said back then was you know, the global um, music streaming business grew about 32% in 2019 um, and total subscriptions crossed over 350 million. So now that we're in 2020 um, and the pandemic is going on, can you talk a little bit more about you know how you see things have changed uh, for the good or the bad? Right. Uh, so if I talk about 2019, so it has been a good year for music streaming. The market grew 32% year on year and crossed the subscriptions of 350 million. And if I talk about 2020, the moment we entered it, we entered into an, a pandemic as well. So, yeah, while the things have been bad for most of the industries, for the media industry, things have been on the brighter side. So as the lockdown happened, uh, people were working from home. So they were having some extra time. So they were leveraging the OTT platforms, both the video and the audio, exploring new shows, songs and podcasts. So I would say the golden era was there in 2019. but with the start of 2020, the pandemic acted as a catalyst for it, and the market grew 35% year on year and 7% quarter on quarter to reach 394 million subscriptions. So, yeah, I would say this pandemic kind of boosted the growth of music streaming. Yeah, thanks for giving an overview again. And for sure, uh, I've, I've definitely changed my patterns on uh, what I do and not commuting anymore and uh, definitely listening to more content. Um, in the home. And can you talk a little bit more about which um, markets have been growing um, particularly? So if I talk about the key markets that experienced growth, uh, I would say the emerging markets were the major winners. The reason for the same is that the market uh, like India and Latin America, Mexico, Brazil, if I talk about, so these are the markets which are not saturated. Uh, music streaming is something new there. It's not been for very long. So what happens is that people are curious to try something new. And yes, uh, they were always listening that Spotify is there in US. Uh, now it is in India. So let's try that. So this gave the initial push in the markets like India. And of course, uh, the data rates, like uh, if I talk about data rates five years back, then we used to get 1 GB per month for $5 in India. But now if I talk about the same scenario, for $5, I'm getting 1 GB per day. So these are the kind of factors for growth of emerging markets and they grew stronger than the developed markets. And also there was the pandemic crisis was epicentered first in Europe, specifically Italy, UK, France, and then it shifted to US. So that was one of the other reasons that the market grew significantly more in the emerging markets rather than these markets. Yeah, I think you made a great point there about how, you know, as we are in this pandemic, uh, we have a lot more access uh, through carriers that are enabling us to get you know, cheaper data rates or, or even free data during this time as carriers know that, you know, it's important for us to um stay in communication with people. It's important for us to be connected. Um, and certainly here from the U.S. perspective, right, we, um, we have um, free data a lot of the time now um, for, for people to, to use. So naturally, that will draw people into different areas and, or other um, content that they're able to listen to. Um, and 
actually, I wanted to um, talk a little bit more now about you know the, the paid subscriptions. Um, so I'm I'm assuming also that there has been growth in paid subscriptions during this, or or what are you what are you seeing in terms of subscription growth? So the primary factor of growth of paid subscriptions, I would say, was people stayed at home, so they got more opportunity to explore new platforms, and there were some newbies who joined the music streaming platforms and experienced it for the very first time. So this was the main reason from the customer point of view, uh, why there was a growth in paid subscriptions. However, realizing the opportunity, the music streaming platforms also gave certain attractive offers to their customers uh, through which they were able to gain some more subscribers. So let me give you some examples. Uh, Like if I talk about Amazon Music, uh, their HD arm, Amazon Music HD, gave three months of free subscription to all its users. Imagine listening to the lossless music for free for three months. So that was a wow offer for all the users and that led Amazon Music grew 104% year on year. Uh, on similar grounds, if I talk about another HD music streaming platform, Tidal, so they also partnered with Best Buy and If any customer buys any smart audio device or any audio device from Best Buy, he would be getting three months of free subscription. And not only that, after three months, he will be getting a discounted premium per month for next usage. To add to it, uh, another move which some tech giants in the music streaming did were to expand in different markets. So if I talk about Apple Music, it expanded into 52 new markets, mainly from Middle East and African region. Uh, recently, Spotify entered Eastern Europe and Russia. So, tapping the Russia market, they got an opportunity to woo and attract more than 250 million music fans in Russia. So, these are the kind of moves the music streaming players are doing to tap the market and gain more subscriber base. Also, to add on to what I said about Apple Music, Apple Music is giving free six month subscription in the 52 new markets where it entered. So yeah, these kind of moves were there, which helped the market grow and the paid subscriptions to grow during the pandemic period. Yeah, so so pricing strategies are really um, a big thing that these uh, music uh, platforms are using to, to drive growth is basically what you're saying. Um, and as as a follow up actually uh to this you know when when i'm at home um i've i've changed the way that i listen to music right so i've switched from music to actually going to listening to more podcasts and also the t- the types of podcasts i listen to are different um i mean just just yesterday uh, michelle obama announced that she is um uh, is going to produce a new podcast on spotify as well um what 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 is your take on that? So uh, it feels like people are are switching their their content. They're, they they might be moving from you know music to uh, to podcasts and listening to specific things. Um, how does that influence things uh, in the industry? So if I talk about the shift in listening patterns, yes, there has been certain shifts. Uh, there has been shift in the place of listening, time of listening, genre. So let me come on each of them one by one. So if I talk about plays, then initially people used to listen to music uh, when they were commuting in their car or in metros. So like Android, Auto, CarPlay were the major places where music was streamed. But now as people remain at home during the pandemic, so the traction on Android, Auto and CarPlay has decreased a bit. And that has been shifted to the smart TV, the smart audio devices, the smartphones. So this is the kind of shift which we have experienced in terms of place. Uh, To talk about the time of listening. So yeah, the commuting time was on an average, say 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And now people are at home, so they wake up at their convenience. So the time has shifted. Then let me talk about the genre. So yeah, there has been consistent shift from music to podcast from the last year. And yes, a podcast streaming has grown really strong during the pandemic. There was a report which said that 20% of the music streaming 
is because of the podcast we have around more than 700000 podcast uh, across all platforms so yeah there is a shift from just listening to music to listening to music and giving some time for the podcast so yeah podcast is going to be the next big thing i believe not only for from the consumer point of view but also from the music streaming platform point of view because they provide an opportunity to differentiate the music streaming platforms from each other so if i add something more about it then recently there was a news that michelle obama will be doing a spotify exclusive podcast from 29th july so if i have to listen to enrique i can go to amazon music if i am having the subscription i don't need to go to spotify or apple music to listen to enrique because i am already having the subscription of amazon music and i can listen to it but yes if i want to listen to michelle obama i at least have to download the app spotify and then uh, only i will be able to get the access to the michelle obama podcast so yeah this is a kind of differentiation which podcast is bringing for the music streaming platforms so if i talk about uh, this there are some indian players as well who are diversifying their content into podcast and small video shows gana has come with podcast in india gana is one of the leading players in the indian market in terms of music streaming uh, they have also realized the potential and they are coming with the podcast talking about spotify there are a lot of hindi content in terms of podcast uh, related to health and wellness related to sports and various other genres and the best thing which i liked about spotify is that it is trying to create a nostalgia out of the people and they are leveraging that nostalgia to bring users on board so recently there was a podcast on the harry potter now the michelle obama thing they are bringing old cricketers to give interviews in terms of podcasts so yeah these kind of moves are helping spotify gain traction in the emerging markets and globally as well so there's different um ex- exclusive content that's available right for for these different providers and not only that they're making it way easier for you to uh make a co- uh, make a podcast right spotify lets you record right on the app from your phone and um even even soundcloud does that so there there are really different ways that you can differentiate with a podcast not only using a blog or um a, a, a different fight a uh, different type of content that you're reading but now you're you're listening to things right and i think that's like really important for um the way that we're consuming media right now um and and last and what, one of the other things abilash i just wanted to talk to you about is in terms of you know in terms of market share and revenue share i've seen different things um which relates to you know who has the biggest uh, market share in terms of monthly active users versus who has the biggest revenue share actually from from making money off of the platforms can you tell us a little bit more about that so uh, if i talk about the market share of music streaming in q1 2020 in terms of revenue spotify led the chart with 30% market share uh, this was followed by apple music 25% Uh, then amazon music with 12% then youtube music with 9% and then pandora with 5% uh, however if i compare this same chart with the mau chart and so uh, the scenario is quite different so if i talk about the mau chart the tencent music has more than 650 million user base which is like the and it ranks number 1 which is like the highest so if attention uh, music is having uh, the highest number of users then why it is not in the revenue chart uh, the reason for the same is that tencent music is a chinese player and the average revenue per paying user for tencent music is somewhere around 1 dollar a month and uh, uh, whereas for the european and us players it is like 10 dollars a month approximately so this is a huge gap between the uh, ARPPU average revenue per paying user so because of this uh, the revenue they are deriving from more than 650 plus million users are quite less compared to the revenue spotify is deriving from 200 plus million users also to add to this i would like to say that 
uh, out of the 650 million plus users of Tencent Music, around 15% of them subscribe to it and rest others are free users for which the company monetizes on the advertising thing. And that revenue per percentage is quite less as compared to the revenue the music streaming platforms get from the paid subscriptions. So yeah, this is the reason that Tencent Music, despite leading the chart for total MAUs, is not in the top five list of revenue share. Very interesting, Avilash. Um, I think that you know that's something that we'll need to track further in the coming quarters uh, and even months to see how that all shakes out. Especially, you know, the the differentiation between you know who has the monthly active, who has the highest monthly active users, and who has the highest revenue, and particularly also how regions might shift over time depending on their spending habits and the way that they actually use that media. So why don't you say uh, you come back another time and uh, we'll have a follow up discussion on this. Thanks, Maurice. It was really nice talking to you. All right, great. Well, thank you so much again for coming on the podcast. Um, as for, And for our listeners, if you want to check out more about Abilash and his research, please go on our website. We have a PR on um, the music streaming business on there right now. Uh, we'll link it in the description of uh, the podcast that we're producing on our website. And if you want to also... Uh, listen to us through the different um, podcasts or for the different ways that you can uh, do that. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, TuneIn, and Google Podcasts. Thanks, everyone. And until next week, see you later.